Israelites. We are here in the highways and byways once again. All praise be to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Yep, all praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to our elders of Great Millstone. Yep, double honors to the elders of GMS. Salute, salute you brothers out there on the highways and byways, pushing true doctrine continually. That's right. Uh, salute you brothers on the highways and byways, teaching in sincerity right. and breaking down the scriptures correctly. Salute you brothers. We are here to wake up the elect of the 12 tribes of Israel, Judah, so-called uh, Negro, Benjamin, so-called West Indian, Levi, so-called Haitians, Simeon, so-called Dominicans, Zebulon, Panama, Guatemala, Ephraim, so-called Puerto Ricans, Manasseh, so-called Cubans, Reuben, so-called Seminole Indians, Gad, North American Indians, Asher, Brazil, to Colombia, and Uruguay, Naphtali, Argentina, to Chile, Issachar, the so-called Mexican Indians. These are the 12 tribes of Israel who Yahweh Shai is coming back to redeem one-third, 144,000, two-thirds is set up for the destruction. Yahweh Shai, we are here for the, he's coming for the elect of these people on this sign. If you pan to the right, you see an artist, an artist rendition of Yahweh Shai, who is a uh, so-called dark-skinned man. Yeah, Revelation 13. Contrary to what you people believe, he's not a so-called white man. As, as the sign, we have the Caesar Bozier sign up. That's the second son, Alexander, the sixth of Rome. Yep. The 1400s, man. You think that's the savior. But really, that's the savior for you so-called Edomites. That that, 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 that's y'all savior. That's not our savior. Our savior is so-called black man. It's Yahweh Shai. Revelation 1 and 13. And in the midst of the in the midst of seven candlesticks, one alike unto the Son of Man. Seven candlesticks are the seven churches in Asia Minor. Go ahead. One like unto the Son of Man. The son of Man, who that is, who you call uh, Jesus, that's Yahweh Shai. Go ahead. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. Clothed with a garment down to the foot, like we're wearing now. We got garments on. These are garments. Yeah, and, and it's like it, brother. I don't mean to cut you off, but it tells you in Numbers 15 and 38 that a man supposed to wear garments. And we're going to edify that here in a second after the brother gets through speaking about Yahweh Shai. All right. And a girt about the paps with a golden girdle. A girt about the paps with a golden girdle. It's so-called war belt that they wore when they went to war so they didn't get stabbed in their in their uh, midsection. His, his head and his hair were like wool. His head and his hair were white like wool. He and his hairs were white like wool. Go ahead. And it's white as snow. As white as snow. When you see an old uh, Negro black man, when he gets old, his hair turns gray, which looks like it's white. They call it gray, but it's really actually turns salt, pepper, uh, white, gray. Read. And his eyes were as flame of fire. His eyes were a flame of fire. Meaning, how shot drunk wine pursuant to Matthew 11 and 19 in Genesis 49 chapter. He was a wine bibber. And, and his feet. And so when I you drink wine, when you drink enough wine, your eyes get red. That's why the scriptures say his eyes are red with wine. I Flame got it. Fire. I got it. I, uh, this is Genesis chapter 49, verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. Genesis 49 is a description giving characteristics of the 12 tribes. Because a lot of people come up and they ask us, how do y'all know that the people that y'all saying are the people on those signs the, with the biblical names? When you look at uh, the biblical names, how do you compare it? It's all in the spirit. Those are characteristics when you read in Genesis 49 that you have to be a spiritual man to know. But it basically gives the characteristics of those tribes. This is uh this is what make this is why it said his teeth is white because this tell you in Sirach 31 and 27 wine is good wine 
wine, Sirach 31 and 27, meaning Ecclesiastics and Apocrypha. Wine is as good as life to a man. If it be drunken moderately, what, what life is then to a man that is without wine? For it was made to make men glad. So that's why when a man drinks wine, he smiles, and that's the way, that's why you're able to see his teeth is white because he's smiling. So that's the edification for that. It says, and the wine is also good for the stomach too, man. Mm -hmm. So that's why Yahweh shot drunk wine. Go ahead, read on. And his feet like unto fine brass. Like his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brass is bronze, which is a brown color. If you pull out a key and look at it, most of your keys are uh, used to be made of uh, brass. Go ahead. And if, it, if, and if they burnt in a furnace. As if they were burnt in a furnace. If you take brown, something something brown and you put it in a fire, then it comes out, it, it's going to be dark. Either burnt black or dark brown. So that's the description of the Lord in Revelation 1 and 15. He says, feet were like unto fine brass. If I take my shoes off, you never see my face. You can look at my feet and tell what color I am. And that's and that's and that was the revelation that John got on the island of Patmos to give you the characteristics of how the Lord looked when he was walking on earth. Okay? It's written. It's written in the scriptures. Alright, you got it. And his voice as the sound of many waters. The voice is the sound of many waters, meaning he had a, a real deep voice. His voice carried out. His voice was very, very, very loud. Uh, uh, I did. The scripture tell you he, he, he talked to the people from the sea. He was on the ship. That means you had to have a very, very loud voice. In Luke, it'll tell you that the Lord was very austere. So that means he was a very, very big man. And aggressive. Yes. And straightforward. So that's the description of the Lord in Revelation. Like the brother said that John saw on the island of Patmos. But a lot of you people still think that Jesus is a white man. That's, just, that's the devil. <laughs> that's the devil. So, I mean, we out here to dispel all them lies, man. We out here to push this truth, man. Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Cry aloud and spare not. Read. Lift, lift thy voice like a trumpet. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Yahweh Shai also lifted his voice like a trumpet. And swore my people, and show my people their transgressions. Show my people their transgressions. That's why we are here. To show the, the Negro, Latinos, and the Native Americans their transgressions according to the Bible. That they should come back to these laws, these statutes and commandments. Because a lot of people, a lot of our people in the tribe don't understand the things that go on with them. They don't understand what's going on. It's because they went against these laws and these statutes and these commandments. And the Lord put curses on you. Those curses you read about in Deuteronomy 28. 1 John chapter 3 verse 4 Whosoever commit of sin transgress also the law for sin is transgression of the law And when you transgress when you transgress you go over So when you transgress you're going over over the law Yeah, you're above the law above, You think you're above the law so you're sinning That's right To repent you have to what? Regress, which is to come back under the law. That's right. So the men of the Lord, that's what we did, because we all got backgrounds in this thing, man. We all got backgrounds that we ain't proud of. So we had to humble ourselves down and come back under the law, man. We had to repent and come back up under this law of these scriptures, man. Right. And and for the and, and to, for the edification uh that the brother said what a showing what the Lord was austere in the book of Luke. It's in book, it's in uh, Luke uh, 19 and 21. It says, because the Lord gave servants uh, uh, this word, okay? He gave the servant this word 
and some of the service did what they were supposed to do, which you see them out on the highways and byways today, and got fruit, and then you had some of the servants that hid what they were supposed to hear this word and then go out there and teach. And this is what the Lord, uh, 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 and this is what he said about the Lord because he knew the Lord was an austere man. He said this Luke 19 and 21 because these people got a, a, a misunderstanding about how the Lord really is according to the scriptures. You see, they think the Lord is love, love, love and they think he just got one emotion. No, he gets angry. So this right here, what I'm finna read shows you that he's a straightforward man. He's bold. He tell you what it is. If you don't like it, so be it. All right. And it says, uh, it says this Luke 19 and 21. For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. So what he was telling them was, I'm gonna I'm I'm read it on down so I can uh, break it down. I'm gonna read it first and then I'm gonna go back and break it down. It says, for I fear thee because thou art an austere man. Thou takest take us up that thou layest not down and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knowest that I was an austere man, take of up that I laid not down, and reap of that I did not sow. Wherefore, then thou gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury. So what he did was, what that wicked servant did was, he knew the, the Lord was straight bold and teaching, and boldness and was scared to tell the people they're right from wrong meaning meaning at that time it was Judah Benjamin and Levi okay so you had a wicked servant he could have been Judah Benjamin and Levi okay he hid what he was supposed to do he wasn't going out there and teach the word so the Lord said look since you didn't go out there and teach the word and gather and gather fruit and gather interest by teaching that word which is the fruit which is the elect of Israel I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna punish you. Okay? And you read down in uh, verse 27, it said, But those are my enemies which would not, which would not that I should reign over them, bring bring hither and slay them before me. So when he comes and to the people who didn't get out on these highways and byways and teach this word to the elect going out there and seek the elect through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem I was shot and, 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 and waking up through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem I was shot the elect he gonna kill you you knew that the Lord was bold so he gonna kill you but that was just going into the detail and edification for the brother when he was speaking saying that the Lord was an austere man and what we doing is through the spirit he giving you the characteristics of how the Lord is. He gave description and he gave you how, how the Lord is an austere man through the spirit of Yahweh Shimei was shot. And they, you got it, brother. Uh, the water, the water. The water through the spirit, brother. Yep. So like the brother said, man, the Lord was austere. Like the scriptures say, the Lord was this austere, man. And he really don't care about you, man. Yeah, scripture. Mm -hmm. yeah. Romans 2 and 11. But he only, he only, so like it, he only cares for the elect. Yep, John 17 and 9 tell you that. He prayed for the he prayed for the elect and his disciples. That's it. John 17 and 9 tell you that. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Yep. Romans 2 and 11. For there is no respect of person with God. See, there is no respect of person with God. So outside of the elect of the nation of Israel, man, the Lord don't care about you. But you people run around, you always say, God is love, God is love. When I was coming around here, they got to spray paint on the wall. All, all we need is love. According to 1 John, uh, I mean, 2 uh, uh, John 2, it's 2 and 6, love is uh, doing the commandments of the Lord. To edify what the brother was saying again, that the Lord only respect the nation of Israel. But 
when Israel, the Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans don't do according to his laws, then that's when they get got. That's when he don't acknowledge them, and that's when he don't even recognize them, when they're being brute beasts, okay? But to edify what the brother was saying, how the Lord respect Israel, I'm going to read this. This is Sirach, meaning Ecclesiastics, chapter 46, verse 14. By the law of the Lord, he judges the congregation, and the Lord had respect unto Jacob. There it is. There it is. That's I'm Israel. A, I'm going to read it again. This Sirach, meaning Ecclesiastics in the Apocrypha, 46 and 14. By the law of the Lord, he judges the congregation. And by the Lord, have respect unto Jacob. Right. The 12 tribes of Israel. Where you see Jacob, you see Israel. It's synonymous. Israel, you see Jacob. So in the Genesis 32nd chapter, Jacob was name was changed to Israel when he wrestled with with, with, a, uh, with, with the angel all night. Yeah, and people don't even under and people don't even understand that uh, about when he wrestled with the angel, because when the angel, when you read that whole story before Jacob was going to see Esau, the angel came to him. Esau is the white man according to the Bible, and when he was wrestling with that angel, it tells you. When you read that story, that when he touched him on his side, basically he was telling Jacob, look, you got a strong spirit, but your flesh is weak. And then when you read on down, it tells you Jacob, meaning the nation of Israel, never, Jacob never attended to that wound which was on his side, which was that flesh. We always had a strong spirit, but our flesh was weak. So that's why the Lord had to come and swallow up death, which is this flesh. All right, you got it? Well, you see a brother, he always got that limp when he walked. <laughs> <laughs> he broke that hip, he broke that hip. <laughs> yeah, man. Brother got that pimp limp. Our, our forefather had it. Yeah. Got that strive in your walk. So, like, like the scripture said, the Lord is austere, man. Hey, man, we out here because the Lord is getting ready to come back, and man, the Redeemer's elect. So that's why we out here, man. Because we out here, man. When the Lord come back, he's coming back. He's coming. He's not coming nice, man. He's not going to come with daisies and Hershey kisses, handing out flyers. Tell him I come to the nearest picnic. He's going he gonna to have a sword. He's doing Matthew 10 and 34. He's going to come. He's going to come to kill, man. Yeah, and to, and to, you know, even though I didn't call the scripture, but I'm going to call it and tell you where it's at. It's in Genesis uh, 32 and uh, 24, where he wrestled that angel. And in uh, Genesis uh, 32 and 32 tells you where he never attended to that wound with, which, when that angel touched him. So it tells you in 32 that they were never able to consume that wound which is that flesh, being the, having a weak flesh. And Israel always had a weak flesh, but the spirit was strong. So it tells you in Genesis 32 and 32, and it tells you in Genesis uh, 32 and 24 when he wrestled the angel. Right. Right. Right, man. So, hey man, when the Lord come back, man, he coming back to, to kill and destroy, man. That's why we out here, man, warning our people of these calamities, these plagues, these pestilence that's coming, these race wars. Martial law, this uh, this chip, uh, nuclear destruction, and you people gonna get caught up in it, man.